So today we are going to actually uh, see how to build a simple API, uh, a SOAP API using an existing uh, SOAP service. On the screen you can see this is the uh, Web Methods API Gateway 10.5. If you haven't followed my videos, uh, have a look at it, how to set up an API Gateway uh, on Docker. It's quite simple and you can have the trial version for uh, 90 days. Uh, the service that I'm going to actually try out is this uh, publicly available SOAP service and there are many operations. I'm just going to use the currencies one. Uh, this is the SOAP endpoint and if you access the WSDL in this form, you can actually see that the service is available. So this is the service that we are actually going to virtualize. This is a native service and we're going to actually log in onto the gateway. So now I've logged in down to the gateway. In the list of APIs, uh, you can see we have the uh, simple REST API that we had seen in the first tutorial. You can have a look at that uh, tutorial where it shows you how to actually build a REST API. Uh, for now, this video, we'll be going to actually build a SOAP API. So building a SOAP API on Web Methods API Gateway is quite simple. If you have the WSTL, you can just uh, point to the WSTL. Uh, so we come over here. Uh, you can either download the WSTL and upload the file over here, or you could just import it from uh, uh, a URL endpoint. So I'm going to choose WSTL. I'm going to give it the URL name, which is the WSTL. And I'll say it is the currency API. Okay, and give it a quick description. And then let's say create. So, uh, on this API, as you can see, there are quite a few operations that are there and automatically the gateway creates those operations over here. You could uh, go and suspend these APIs, a certain operation if you're not interested in. For that, first of all, we have to activate the service. I'm going to activate it. And as you can see, each and every service is there. You can go and say which operations you want to turn off or turn on. So I'm going to leave all the operations intact and save the service once more. So all the operations are available. And uh, from here, now the service is up and running. Uh, this is the endpoint of the API. Uh, if you want to see the WSTL that gets generated, we're going to actually uh, put it in over here. Yeah. Now this won't work because uh, I don't have a host entry and the port is incorrect. Uh, the Docker instance I have is running on triple five six. If you access the WSTL, you can see it has actually generated the WSTL, which is quite identical to the uh, native service. So now you can actually consume this API. You can give this WSTL to any of your consumers or any of your clients uh, to start consuming the service. So once you come over here, the API is active. To SOAP UI, where I will go ahead and import the WSTL. Uh, let's say this is the gateway SOAP API and I'll go ahead and uh, create the um, project over here. So it has created the project. So it has created the project and you can see all the operations are listed over here. Now, if I were to go and open a service and try to access it, Let's see. Oh, and try to access the service. Uh, it actually goes to the backend service, uh, native service, and comes back with a response. So uh, I'm going to put in a country code. Let's, uh, for simplicity, just put US. It makes a call, call, and you get back a response. So what actually happens is the call goes to the gateway, and the gateway in turn goes to the SOAP service, and you get back a response. 
uh you can put different countries uh, over here and try i'm just going to try some random values um, let's see we put yeah i didn't find that i'm not very familiar with all the iso codes to try in as in india yeah so you have inr uh, and uh, and so on and so forth uh, so basically it shows that it's going to the native service and it responds with the actual service call if we go back to our api you can see that um, all the operations are intact and you can turn on and turn off what you want in your analytics you can get to see uh, how many times the api is called and in the policies you can see that the endpoint that it's trying to reach is this so we haven't activated any of the other policies or uh, uh, to see how advanced this can get but uh, the the reason for uh, building this api is to show how simple it is to actually virtualize a soap service on the gateway uh, you can just start from uh, directly on the wstl or you can download the wstl into a zip file and you can upload it uh, from the apis uh, the 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 key thing to keep in mind when you upload the Uh, WSDL is that all the XSDs, uh, if there are, for example, any imported XSDs, all of them should be put together in a zip file, and uh, the zip file is what you would actually upload over here. Uh, if you just have a WSDL which is uh, one file, you can just put the WSDL as a file and select it over here. But if you have a composite XSDs or imported XSDs, you got to actually put them all together in a zip file. and then uh, import it over here and the name of the wsdl uh, should be or the name of the file name of the wsdl should be referred over here as the name so give it a try uh, if you are facing any challenges uh, let me know uh, with your questions in the comment box and i can surely help you with them thank you hope you like the video uh, if you would like more content please uh, subscribe to the channel and let me know if you have any other queries thank you